Welcome to Scribbler Describe. I'm your host, David Scribbler Wishart, and I'm joined by my co-host, resident scribe, Pastor Ronnie Smith from Peace Lutheran Church. We invite you on a spiritual journey to explore questions of faith and the human experience. If you're searching for more meaning in your life, you're not alone. So join us as we search for wisdom and personal growth through a theological lens. Well, for tonight, uh, as inspired by the reading yesterday and the sermon and everything for us to finally dive into this topic that we've been kind of interested in talking about for a while. And it's the idea that serving others is the most selfish thing you can do. Mm. Putting yourself into service of the world around you and the people that you deal with. You've told me about this idea, but that it all feeds back to you. And it is like a, a virtuous cycle where that, you know, being that, um, servant to others leads to your own well-being and that the world's a richer place when when uh, you pay it forward so to speak and so I wanted to dig into that so maybe you can first talk a little bit about what what was discussed yesterday and in, in through that lens and kick us off that way because I yeah I, I've been doing a lot of my own homework on this in the um, perspective of like leadership and management and, and um, you know, managing a team of people with work. And one of the things that's come up across multiple people I've heard speak, and it hasn't been in, in any kind of faith-based context, but is this idea of um, the servant leader and that true leaders put all of those others uh, ahead of themselves and that by putting themselves in service to those around them. That's how they, they lead and, and achieve their objectives is by just put, making, um, putting people first. So when, you know, I, I, I heard the reading, you know, the, the sermon yesterday, I was like, oh, well, it's funny that this is all kind of um, coming around and saying the same thing that, you know, you can have this discussion in the world of business about how to, um, you know, grow and move a business forward and then hear the same thing in, um, you know, in a faith-based environment and, and just goes to show that there's, there's certain things that may be like universal truths. It's like a universal power of the universe that we can't deny. And, and so this is something that's really powerful. And I love that tagline that, you know, serving others is the most selfish thing you can do because I've been trying to live it too through my day-to-day -day life um just walking by people in the street you know um and saying hello and asking them how they're doing and and just you know i went by a guy today and he was putting a new door on somebody's house and i said looking good man you know and just i i never would do that before in the past I just walk <laughs> by and i might think it but i never say it and i'm just trying to get in the habit of saying these things and injecting some of that positivity in the world it's a small thing but it's you know it's no cost to me right yeah absolutely no that's great it's it's those little things that add up day after day um but thanks for bringing this up i'm reminded of i don't know if you remember the movie the land before time I, I a bunch do. of dinosaurs yeah and i guess i keep coming up with movie references here but one thing really struck me in that movie uh really made a big impression on me there it's like the bad Tyrannosaurus Rex or whatever it was, was the leader at first of all the dinosaurs. He was a real bad guy. And the heroes are like just some little young kid dinosaurs. And um, <clears throat> the leaders make taking them on this forced march, like across a really long distance to try to get some water because I guess there's a drought or something. And um, the three youngins i guess they're falling behind basically because they're having a hard time keeping up uh, but they actually somehow uh, while they're resting i think like one of them like hit their tail on the ground or something like that and it's like a soft spot and they found out there's a bit of water there 
so the bad guy like he comes back to see what's going on he's like you know giving him crap basically like we gotta go and then he drank that tiny little bit of water that was there and you know let them know who was boss but i always thought that was uh, a sign of real leadership uh like guess the main character was like you know taking care of his friends along the way making sure that they were accompanied and they didn't get left behind and those sorts of things and so we had these two leadership styles really contrasted right next to each other and i don't know why but as soon as you started talking about that i thought about that movie which i'd seen i don't know 30 years ago or something like that but that always struck me as as the right way to lead so like in ministry um kind of have to say like um you can't lead so far ahead that you lose the flock i guess or a shepherd like the shepherd can't go so far away like no matter how fast they want to go he has to go he or she has to go the pace that the flock can safely go kind of thing um but in doing that so um in you know kind of denying ourselves in that and serving the servant and acting at this servant leaderhood making sure everybody else is okay um, you strengthen all the people around you. You're you're being a blessing to them, and they in turn bless you. And very soon becomes apparent that the blessings that are coming back your way far outnumber the blessings that you're giving out. And so this week we talked about uh, Jesus told a bit of a metaphor about the wheat grain, grain of wheat, and it says, "Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies." It remains just a single grain, but if it dies, it bears much fruit. He goes on to say, those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. This is from the Gospel of John, chapter 12, 24 to 25. Uh, so we talked about this grain of wheat. And so in the life cycle of a wheat plant, you have, first of all, the soil. Uh, you would have water and you'd have sunlight. And so the seed, as it germinates, it takes roots and, and grows roots so that the plant can then feed off the nutrients in the soil and begin to grow a stem and some leaves. So the stem grows up nice and strong to sort of support the whole plant and to transport these nutrients um, and also to hold out more leaves so the leaves can reach out and grab the sunlight and process the energy that way. With all of these things working together, um, a head of wheat springs out with uh, some grains in it. And so Jesus's point then is that, you know, having become a grain of wheat, um, it only fulfills its purpose by dying and being put back into the soil so that the roots can grow, so that this new stem can grow, new leaves can grow, and then ultimately a new head of grain. And so each head of grain, I learned a little bit more about wheat this week, each head of grain has about 50 grains in it. And one wheat plant typically produces about five heads. So from one seed, you'll get about 250 seeds. Um, and so, you know, while one, it may seem great to be, you know, the grain that gets all the glory in a lot of people's imaginations, but the grain does well to remember that it's nothing without the roots, without the soil, without the water, without the sunlight, without the stem, without the leaves. And so in order to perpetuate this life cycle, it must give up its life, die and be replanted in the soil so that everything can go on as intended. And I suppose just drawing a lot of um, similarities uh, between that and us, <clears throat> How, um, you know, if you die to your own ego and die to your own self-interest, you then are equipped to serve others. And as you are blessing others, you'll find that the many more blessings come back uh, upon you. So that's why it's the most selfish thing you can do. It, it's a bit cheeky to say that, of course. Uh, we're doing that on purpose. But um, in the end... Um, to take care of your own spiritual well-being, mental and physical well-being, um, giving yourself up for others always pays off. Well, one thing that, you know, in the world of 
business and business gets, um, you know, a rap for being quite self selfish and self centered and especially, you know, sort of a lot of these capitalistic ideas um, can can look that way. But, it, you know, one of the things that people who run businesses need to bear in mind is that it doesn't exist in a vacuum. You know, as an entrepreneur or a you know, business owner or your, your company itself, it doesn't exist in a vacuum. It's it's part of a community, and that that business cannot thrive without employees, without customers, um, without good rule of law and institutions, and a society that makes that possible. So all these things have to coexist together, and then these arguments kind of come up, and you know, talking about taxes and stuff like this and, and you know what you should contribute but really it's just I think it doesn't even matter about matters of policy and politics but just that it's important to understand that you don't exist uh, alone in all this and it's and it's kind of an impoverished existence anyway to think that you well like you want to be alone in the universe like it, that it's just it's very cold and unforgiving uh in, in that way and it, to think you know we're we're doing this because we are selling a product that um, our clients love it helps make their lives easier our employees are engaged because they really feel like they're adding value to the world and we're just every day working hard to um, make the world a better place and our business is thriving because we're on that kind of a mission. It's just a very different thing, right? And whereas if it's all about just the bottom line and and everything, I you probably are not as successful of a business, but also just um, your compass is off kilter. And so I think a lot of success in anything in your life is really about, you know, how do we serve serve others. Um, you've heard it said, uh, many, many people, um, like to flaunt this idea of self-made man or self-made woman. And, uh, I, I declare there's no such thing. Um, and for a lot of the same reasons that you just, uh, mentioned, doesn't matter how ambitious you are, doesn't matter how successful you've been, how talented, how driven every single person in this world gets a hand up somewhere along the way um, before you even can walk or talk or have any kind of coherent thought there are people nurturing you and raising you up from nothing essentially um you know sure people accomplish a lot of great things but it, as you just said what's a, what's a great business person without a customer base without logistical support without um you know suppliers without um a whole host of things uh, to make you know product X successful or whatever. Uh, no, but none of us are in a vacuum. And I really like how you mentioned uh, you know rule of law and things like that. Uh, for all those um, people would be offshore uh, people, I guess. Um, be careful what you wish for because <clears throat> a lot of jurisdictions around the world. Uh, come with a lot of violence, a lot of political turmoil. Um, you know, what else like uh, safety um, standards are non-existent and things like that. So, you know, to operate out of Canada, you have a very <clears throat> stable society. You have a relatively well-educated workforce at your disposal. You have uh, peace all kinds of things like that, that are really hard to quantify. Uh, but if you're just chasing the bottom line, the dollar, then it, yeah, sure, I guess you can go to those places, but you're not adding value uh, in a way that you could be, I suppose. I don't wanna just paint everybody as, as not being uh, value added to this world. Uh, but the self-made person's an illusion and the people who go around flaunting that notion about themselves, um, need some work, I guess, need to look in the mirror and, and recognize all the people that gave them a hand up to be in that position, that privileged position. 
and then once having you know becoming aware of your privilege then you <clears throat> feel a responsibility to use it or exercise it more um, <clears throat> purposefully perhaps it's important to recognize how lucky you've been and when you recognize that it makes it a lot easier to help others because you realize you have certain advantages and it's not i don't think it we're we're saying this uh to diminish you know personal accomplishment right. because certainly there are people out there who work a lot harder in the world and put more effort in than others yeah um so i mean that's just evident that that's the case so it's it there there's definitely an element of you know luck that you're born in canada you're you you know whatever the circumstances are you're born healthy you have good parents um so there's some luck elements to all of that um not to mention when you know people of different racial groups who've struggled um because of the color of their skin which they cannot control um you know these these prejudices that exist in the world that we should all be working to get rid of because we need to recognize that you know we're all coming into this life with no we don't we, we don't get to choose the circumstances in which we we enter the world we do however get to choose how we engage in the world and how we get to choose whether we want to make it a better place for everyone or not and that is the choice that's available to us and that's really important that we recognize that that that's there and it doesn't have to be a big thing each day but it should be something that you recognize that the world could be a better place by me just showing an act of kindness or something of that nature and i'm trying to do that like shrink the size of those problems a little bit to just say like well you know i can do make the world better for just this guy on the street or whatever just through a friendly hello and a smile and uh who knows what that injects into the world and you know i was just thinking like metaphorically speaking what is a better world to live in is it one where every single person to the goes to the the one the the, the man or woman on their left and they pay them a genuine compliment and it goes around the entire earth and 7 billion people later have had that happen to them or the one where that doesn't happen. And obviously the former is just going to be a world that's injected with it, a little bit more energy in it than the other, uh, the other version. And that just tells you something, right? Like it, it seems just self-evident when you frame it that way. Uh, and if that's evident, why are we not doing it? I mean, we've become so insular. So, um, I think maybe one place we can turn this discussion on that basis is, okay, if that's true, what would Jesus say about how to get yourself out of that self-centered mindset? If you're stuck kind of thinking about how hard the world is or how bad it is for you and um, you've, you're angry or you feel lonely or whatever the case may be, and, um, there's a sort of hard done by sense to, to life. You know, what does Jesus say about getting yourself out of that? Well, um, lots of things, I'm sure. <laughs> um, nothing specifically comes to mind, but, um, you know, he was always on about, um, you know, deny yourself. Um, you know, that's something we've said on here a lot, you know, deny your, if any want to follow me, deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow me. Uh, so that's a really big one. Um, I guess the first step, though, for those folks is to recognize that there's an issue there. Um, and if you're unhappy with your life, you need to have this kind of look in the mirror kind of moment. And I say this to people all the time, if, if, thing, if you're not happy, if you're bummed out or things aren't going the way you want, do something nice for somebody else and watch how your whole disposition disposition changes. And the more you start to add those up, the more you practice that every day, all day, you one day turn around, you're like, wow, look at all these blessings in my life. And it all starts with just getting out of your own way in a, in a sense. Um, and you know, there is some individual responsibility there too. Uh, it's incumbent upon all of us to have that conversation with ourselves, 
to check ourselves. Um, and I can't really do that for anyone. And I guess Jesus can't really do that for anyone either. But, um, you know, it's a good place to, to look if you want to think about how can I start to reshape my life? Well, go to the Gospels and see what Jesus was on about. Um, in that reading, he said, those who love their life will lose it. And that's basically people who were intent on living for their own self-indulgence. Um, that's no kind of way to live. That's a very empty life in the end, you'll find. Might seem good at the time, but um, <clears throat> it's, it's somehow injurious to the spirit or the soul to live a life that way. Um, so I, I hope that's a starting point anyways, to the question. So I got a couple of things there. Where should I start? Uh, well, before first... you got a couple of things, let me say one other thing. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you mentioned a guy in the street, uh, yeah. person in the street. Um, you know, it's really tempting when you see like people begging for money or things like that to like sort of you know, not like them or like, what are they doing? Or, or you just feel uncomfortable. You hope they don't look at you or, or things mm -hmm. like that. And every time I see someone like that, I think, what's the difference between me and that person? And the answer is not much. It's a very razor thin margin between me and someone like that. The quote unquote, least of these uh, that Jesus does mention, you know, whenever you do these things for the least of these, you do it for me, those kinds of things. Um, so, so, you know, a, a humbling oneself is required in there too, right? Because, um, you know, in a lot of cases, people on the street suffer from mental illness, or maybe they had a family and they all died and they couldn't deal with it or something like that, or they turned to drink or, or maybe their family left them for, or who knows, or maybe they've been abused. Uh, people don't grow up, you know, longing to live in the street, like terrible mm -hmm. things happen to these people somewhere along the way and they just couldn't cope with it anymore. And that could be any one of us. That could be me tomorrow. If my family was gone all of a sudden, what would I do? I, I'd be a total mess. So I always try to remember that uh, and, and just try to have compassion about that. And th these things add up, I guess. So the more you notice in life, the more opportunities you have um, to act on these things. And then it starts to snowball once you get into a little rhythm, get some momentum going. So what you just said, it, you know, but somebody who's homeless, it relates back to what we were talking about earlier, where, you know, the self-made man idea. And if you are an ascriber to this idea that, you know, everybody is self-made and that there is no real luck or circumstance in the universe and that I worked hard and that I'm the product of my effort, mm -hmm. then you're going to look at the person, the homeless person very differently than if you believe that, you know, we're, we are at least to some extent a product of the circumstances that we find ourselves in and that you know some people are luckier than others and that i shouldn't judge because i don't know what kind of uh, situations befell this individual that i never had to experience the hardships that i never had to go through and so if you believe that your attitude is going to be very different about you know a person who's fallen on hard times and by extension, you know, how you're going to treat them. Because if you believe in the self-made man, you're going to treat this person poorly because you feel like they're just a drunk or somebody who um, didn't, you know, take care of themselves and, and they're lazy and, and the, whatever the case may be. And you become very judgmental uh, about it all. And it's a very narcissistic kind of attitude to have. So it's definitely important to check ourselves. And it's not to say that some people have gotten in situations where there was a, like a, a fork in the road where they made a bad decision and they could have done better for themselves. Like that, 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 that happens, I mean, but who cares, right? People make mistakes and they should be, we should forgive them for the things that they've done because today is a new day and tomorrow is the future. And, and 
you know, you can turn these things around. So whatever's happens, like we don't need to just persecute people and just say, sorry, you, you, there's no chance for you now. Like it's done. You made that one decision and it's over. Um, but that's kind of what we're, what we're saying. And I, I find that sad. But the other thing I think is interesting about what, what you, you know, you bring up this, this situation that I, um, appealed to me is you said, well, what if those circumstances happened to me? I could find myself there. And I would argue that no, you wouldn't. And the reason you wouldn't is because you put yourself in service to others, because you put yourself in service to the rest of the world, you have a support network that's extremely strong. And because you have that super strong support network, it's hard for you to fall that far because these people will lift you up. They'll prevent that from happening and they'll be there for you in those times. But when you always act in your own self-interest, you don't have it. That network is not there. And so when you fall, you fall hard. And that's, uh, that's really unfortunate, right? And, and it's much harder to get up uh, at that point. So, and it, I, I want, I've been wanting to put this line in here somewhere, you know, so I heard it and I just, I thought it was the, the best line. I'm trying to use it any chance I can. And I've probably broken record by now over the last couple of weeks, but it, it really struck me because I've made this mistake, but the line is, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And I think I've spent too much of my past life trying to go fast mm. and not focused enough on going far and the sustainability and longevity of that. But if you want to go far in life, if you want to live a long, healthy life, it really is about having that support network and, and going together. It's a very lonesome existence otherwise, and it's not one that any of us should really choose voluntarily. Right. Yeah, we are definitely a social animal, as they say. <clears throat> Um, re reminds me of uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Mm -hmm. Kind of dispute that a bit. I don't know if we've talked about that already, but um, I think having other people is the number one thing that you need to have because all those other things can become possible um, if you if you have support that way. If you have people to talk to, if, you know, because we've got this whole mental side of us too that needs nourishing too and that only happens with other people uh present <clears throat> you know the love and affection of you know, a family or whatever <clears throat> excuse me uh, i think if you have that you can do all take care of all those other things but that's just me i guess yeah isn't there is this a story from the bible i think i maybe it's just a like um fable or something that i've heard but it's just that image of you know the the only real the difference between heaven and hell is that um you know everybody's sitting at a table and they all have arms out straight and they can't bend their elbows and and hell they none of them can get the food to their mouth right but in heaven they're all feeding one another and they're all nourished mm. You know, that's the, interesting I've never heard that one. Oh, really okay yeah well now the the scribbler is teaching the scribe something so. <laughs> nice um yeah i don't know where that came from but i thought it was like an, a a good image to just sort of differentiate the two and and that's all it takes right yeah absolutely and that ties in perfectly with uh with that kind of reading we started it with um when you serve others everyone's needs are end up getting taken care of and that's, mm -hmm. that's good for you too. If the people around you are feeling loved and cared for and, and, and lifted up and supported, well, guess what? That's coming back to you like 250 fold, I guess, if we're grains of wheat. So we want to tie the, all these concepts together. Really, when we say serving others is the most selfish thing you, you can do, we're, we're not saying serve others so you can help yourself and get ahead it's it's not that it's just that in serving others it creates this vitality and energy and positivity in the environment around you you get support 
you build up a community and all of these things lift you up to a level that elevate you to a place where you would never get to otherwise. And that uh, when you're in this period of despair, your instinct is to think about how bad the world is and how it's treating you. And you have to go against that instinct and do something great and good for the world. And it turns itself around and it's like a weird magic power that it has and it's, it, but it always happens. And so, um, I, you know, it just, it, it really strikes me. So I'm glad that you, you brought it up. I think that's a great, you know, it's a cheeky line, but I think it's a good one. Yeah. Thanks. Um, in all of this, I, I've been thinking of, um, one of the things that Jesus says, um, he was asked, what's the greatest commandment? And he says to love God with your heart and your mind and your soul. And the second is like it, he adds, um, which is to love your neighbor as yourself. All of scripture hangs on these two things. Mm -hmm. So if you love God and love your neighbor, everything else is going to fall into place for you. Um, if you're if you're not satisfied with your life, start helping other people and watch the transformation in your own life. If you want to feel full, fulfill your dreams, help other people fulfill their dreams and watch what happens. Mm -hmm. so I guess is, this isn't a quick fix either. It doesn't just happen because you you know throw somebody a, a toonie. Um, this is a dedication for your whole life or lifelong dedication yeah. to to loving god loving your neighbor as yourself so anything that you would want you wish for every single other person that you come across yeah and and live that out and see what happens so if you could give somebody a piece of advice a young person who right now is struggling and um you know having a hard time and and feeling depressed um, you know, in, in this context, like what, what's a piece of advice that you would give them? Something small that they could, could do starting now to turn that around. Well, just off the cuff, I would think stop, first of all, and notice. Stop and notice there's something in your life that you can point to as a blessing. Well, you're talking about gratitude, really, right? Like, uh, yeah, so stop and notice that you're experiencing these um, negative feelings, I guess, not to uh, shame yourself or anything, uh, but just to stop the cycle of spiraling out of control, stop and notice, and then start to look around you and, and observe what you're grateful for. And make that a practice, a spiritual practice. Whenever you're feeling out of control, whenever you're feeling anxious, you have to stop that feeling and notice and go from there. And then if you want to serve others from there, once you've got, you've had that reflection and you're starting to kind of see beyond yourself, any good tips for how people can do uh, that? Yeah, well, just look for those opportunities to serve others around you every day. Um, and the other thing that happens magically too is when you do do an act of kindness it feels really good you mm -hmm. feel like you have some purpose that maybe you didn't have like i can have an impact in this world i matter yeah because i can help so and so with this or i can do this for that person or if someone asks for help i can go do that um and you might feel like well there's nowhere to do that in my life um, it could be just passing someone in the street, as you said, you know, shouting out, Hey, great job on the door. And it's it, not also, it's, it's a tiny little thing, but it lifted your spirits and I'm sure it lifted that person's spirits mm -hmm. too. And what's that worth? Well, and even just in the online world too, right? I mean, there's so many times when people have opportunities to comment on something and often they might make a negative comment or criticize. And instead of that, Look at it as an opportunity to find something good in what you watched uh, or what you read and make a positive comment. Right. And just 
even if it everything about it irked you and you didn't like it, but there was just something good about it, find the good in it, just try, right? And, um, you know, and if you can't do that, just don't say anything at all. But uh, I think that there's lots of little opportunities. Maybe you may not see them or not, but there's lots of opportunities to do something good each day. And it's just a matter of not letting them slip by. That's it. You know, I believe that the spirit tries to talk to every one of us in some kind of way. And maybe some of us have uh, grown better ears to hear over the years. Uh, but that that's there for everyone. We hope you found your time nourishing and life-giving. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. If you would like to hear more and support the podcast and Peace Lutheran Church, please consider donating at the link in the description. For DW, I'm Pastor Ronnie Smith. Peace be with you.